Good evening. Uh, this is Sarah Chiu. The program is Basket Starfish, our language core. Um, as I said, uh, I am still talking about the thread, you know, related to the H and the S. And uh, I am going to uh, show you today, you know, a small clip of a video that I make myself. I'm proud of myself, you know. <laughs> I never know this technical thing, but I did make a small video to explain my point. And here we go, because I have 16 slides. I hope I can get through today. And um, let me see. Okay. Okay, uh, again, uh, the basket starfish, our language core. And uh, again, I want to I want you to see this uh, picture of a basket starfish. I believe that we share that common core and uh, none of the fam uh, none of the language families are actually tree. They are actually branches branching out from the same ancient ancient core. Okay, so I want us to change our way of looking at it because some linguistic theories, I think, use a loop to divide human humanity and the more we look at it the more we think we are different from each other and again uh, I think grammar is uh, never has been that important like today because uh, the modern education system actually make it so I remember when I was a child even my grandmother speaks uh, spoke in a very different way from me and they will use they will shift the sentence around it only because of the modern television that uh, we begin to uh, standardize a lot of things you know so grammar is actually uh, less important that we think they are now and um, uh, once again, I want to ask this question, are we too educated to see through the patriarchal academic lenses? Uh, because we are too educated in that and we are very stiff in understanding things. So sometimes we read things in a different way <clears throat> and we don't hear words, you know, in its uh, original form. Uh, I will show you a few examples uh, this uh, I mean this week um, again uh, is about the interchange between the H and S as you if you have for, been following in the last few weeks uh, you would understand that it's always about the thread the rope and then the S and the Z would be the two small thread that combine into the big hang the big H okay and again uh, the all this abstraction and the concept came from the ancient obsession of multiplication because the more you ply into a uh, thread the thicker it become it becomes a rope it actually become a metaphor to become a tribe a family and so on but then the more I look I the more I understand that this obsession is not just ancient it has always been the same look at our modern world you know how obsessed you know we are of numbers you know if I tell you something nowadays it seems that no one believes you ex except if you present them with some numbers but we we I think we forgot that uh, sometimes number can be manipulated. You can explain a number from different points of view. And so uh, sometimes I think, you know, too, too dependent on number might not be that scientific as we think. OK, so. Okay, this is the, the little uh, video that I made, as I said, you know, I will show you in a second. But as the heading says, the core, um, again, you know, like the basket starfish, you know, now you don't look at that core, you look at this core as the thread itself. But if you hear me here, I will read all these words out to you. So uh, you understand that when I travel from very remote places, when I am not supposed to understand their language, if I don't know how to write, you know, this is how I can hear all the words the same way. This is like the core and then the court and then the cohort and then the court, you can see. All of these either about uh, the center, you know, the axle of a thread, okay? So of course, you know, this H, you know, the form gradually become also our understanding of the heart. This is uh, the heart of a rope, the heart of the thread, okay? So I will play it out so, and I will explain it after it finishes. It just take a few seconds. But it's my work.
Okay, there it is. Um, as you can see, it actually takes the same form as that basket starfish, but it takes the form of uh, the first human technology. As I said, uh, the uh, thread itself, look at this. This is the writing of uh, H in the ancient uh, Hebrew and also Phoenician way. Uh, the heart is actually the trailing of many small threads into a big thread, okay? And then the H, you know, become the, the word heart. and and if you chase back all this it become as I said you know from the small thread the S trail and the Z trail if you are weaver you will understand this up till this day you still follow the same system uh, one goes uh, clockwise the other one goes anti-clockwise but then when you train them together they become this heart at the core of the thread right so but then um, as the family tree is not a tree the family tree is just a branch of from the same heart same core it is uh, you can look at it there is a mirror image of that and I write uh, the Greek alphabets right there these are the S alphabet of the in Greek and these are the Z alphabet in Greek so as you can see you know the ancient actually also understand it as a trailing spinning action right there and um, you will see that if, with a little bit of imagination this is just a two-dimensional picture that I can draw for you because I still don't have the the technology to show you uh, in a computer three-dimensional way you can uh, imagine it as just like a globe a ball and the center is all twisted together and um, that's why you know the H actually even in English the H are all visual symbol telling you what it, it's dealing with you know the herb you know which is the fiber itself or the hair and then um, when you tie everything together you know the ancient easily uh, related to herd and then the heritage that's what you are linked to and of course you look back into the center the two uh, threads are hugged together the English word hug the H is also a visual symbol and then if you go to the S side, as I uh, showed to you again and again, the synchronized, the first part, sin or sim or symphony, or the English word sync now, you know, they all come from the S and the Z part, you know, the also to do with the trailing together to form one, okay? And this is a Chinese sin, which exactly means thread. And this is the uh, Egyptian hieroglyph, sin or shin or, or sesh. And you will see that it's also the trailing moment and the Chinese also have this ancient writing you can see clearly that it's trailing two into one uh, there are many uh, reading uh, about that character but one uh, but two of them is sin sin and sin and sim okay so you can see that they are all uh, side by side in the uh, like the Western sound so uh, there is actually no family this is only one big family not different families okay so I will carry on with other slides Guys, again, I want you your mind to be able to switch between reality and abstraction. And this is the basket starfish, the branches, you know, all intertwining together. And this is a bunch of thread, you know, and and twined together. So the keys of the words are always like entangled threads. They are never, never shown like the academic world showing you. You know, the words come from Greek and then from Latin to Latin to English to French to or or from. Pro to uh, um, German to 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 whatever whatever so this is not you know a linear thing it's all mixed together we throw words back and forth it's all entangled together and uh, again ancient people use direct metaphors and and they are very very imaginative in their own way so I want to show you uh, a nature three very important S forms you will see the S form why I write Haya Haya is, is close closely related uh, to ancient language either it is the snake or it is life itself so in ancient time it's always linked to the image of a, a thread too so this is nature's s-form first of all is a water the river 
and then the snake itself, and then as uh, the human technology of uh, trailing threads and ropes, you know, when they are entangled, when they throw them together, they can all be looked at in the same way. And I will show you a few English words and, 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 or, and other languages to show you what our connections are. So uh, this, first of all, look at the water. You know, if you were in ancient, there was no word to describe it. You can only use two metaphors. Either you uh, describe it as a snake or you describe it as rope, right? So uh, there is, uh, in Chinese, you can see the early writing. This is snake form. You know, we have a pronoun Cantonese pronunciation. Once again, this research is done in can based on Cantonese because I'm from the south of China. Cantonese is a very, very ancient language. And I use Mandarin once in a while when I show you the mutation sound, okay? And most of the linguists only use Mandarin. That's why they do not see any relationship. Again, uh, this is uh, so in Cantonese sound. And this look at this wavy line. This is Egyptian hieroglyph. This is Xi. Okay, and this is Su in Tur modern Turkish. All this all means water. Okay, and it's related to the S sound and S form. Okay, so uh, this is again in Cantonese Se. Se is a uh, snake. And of course, you know, it's closely related to the sun serpent. And, and this is the first part, you know, related to it. And um, this is the Chinese writing. You can see that, uh, but I will have to show you some other uh, uh, linkage to other sounds. So you don't only think that only uh, one object has only one sound. There are many different sounds to uh, describe one single object. And it has, the relationship has been shown since ancient time okay this is the uh, Chinese writing of Ta or to, these are uh, snake related. But then we also use it, you know, we add a hand uh, symbol right next to it to means to pull something, to, 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 to drag something. And it sounds as to. Okay, so this is exactly the same meaning as the verb in, in English tau, okay? And then the German word tau is actually the back to the rope itself. So either you describe the snake as the rope or you describe the rope as the snake so we are all borrowing this metaphors you know to describe all these ancient concepts okay so let me go back to the s sound again and um, this is the chinese writing of sin which is thread and as you can see we have the marker of a twisting thread and then we have a thinner thread right here that means a small thread and then uh, when we actually have the same marker but we draw a snake and then it is sing can you hear the sound sing? Sing is actually a thicker rope and um and in German cell is actually a rope also, a thicker rope. And uh, in Chinese, this is actually uh, goes to the other kind of writing, but you can see it very clearly, it's two hands holding a big rope, okay? So uh, we have the sound as sock or, 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 or sock. Okay, so uh, you will see that uh, this is uh, normally in Chinese now, we use this together, sing, so, as to describe a thick rope, okay? So uh, if you span, speak Spanish, you will know that easily, the soga. The soga is exactly the sock in the sock in Chinese, okay? So it's exactly means a cable, a thick rope, okay? So we are all, these are all coming from the same ancient core. And when I go back to the water on this side, you will see that, you know, this is the uh, snake itself. We put an, an, an A symbol there showing the unseen energy but without the unseen energy and then you can see the word gradually develop this this twists and turns we uh, have a sound for it is why why is a um, uh, worm actually so you can see that uh, in German this is worm this is why okay so because of the twisting thing uh, twisting form and then there is a Chinese word, you know, again, you know, in order to, sh the ancient, in order to show what they are talking about, put the rope right there and then put a uh, curving sign right there to show that it's something curving. In Chinese, a curve is one, okay, exactly like the uh, German Wenden, okay, and then uh, the German word Wasser comes from this curving Warden, and exactly 
exactly because they are talking about the curving shape of this thing and which become the concept of a water okay and of course it become water the water become water and then when I'm talking about water I have to show an, a few other uh, English alphabet and uh, again this is hieroglyph this is an M this is an N you will see that one is a bigger water more water the other one smaller water this is M this is N okay and then when it changed to uh, ancient Hebrew and Phoenician this is an M this is an N and then in Phoenician this is an also uh, an N, this is an L. See how closely related they are? And that's why all this L, M, N in, uh, in Latin, they all are uh, lined up together because for the ancient, they know that they are closely related to water. But the sound mime and all this uh, stay in the uh, Semitic uh, line. And then uh, all the other sound, sounds were uh, stay with other languages. I will show you this liquid related alphabets right there because the L and R is actually a mutation but these are related with the forms. This is M, this is N in hieroglyph and as you can see you know if you turn right this this is M, this is N, this is L okay so uh, go back to the Chinese. I will show you a Chinese word lao. Now you can hear the sound uh, lao, okay? Lao or in Mandarin is liu. Liu is actually means a water flow. Something's flowing. As you can see, we actually use the water path and actually we use the snakes to, to describe it. This is exactly as reality itself. And um, you will see uh, underneath, in this is Greek now, narrow is water. And, and Nilos is actually the Nile River. For them, it, it means a, a, a river, you know, uh, is the, the river of Nile comes from the concept of just a river. If you look at the ancient time, you know, the Phoenician and the Greek would be, would be writing the end like this. And so you will see that it's actually very pictorial and visual as well. So uh, as you can see, Greek is also very visual at the time, at the beginning. So uh, you will see see that this Phoenician sign and the Chinese sign both of them they use it to express water but the Chinese use the, uh, the still maintain the the sui sound the s sound but the uh, Greek because it become an alphabetic system and this become an n itself so it become the the, the denial you know for uh, as in the western world so I will show you this, this real, liu, lao, you know, liu, all this were different languages as I travel around, as I can hear this are re uh, related to river, the liu, as you can see, uh, become the river in English, and um, I forgot to tell you this, this nima, as you can see, the ancient will be writing like this, this is actually the thread itself, so they constantly compare, you know, the snake and the water and the River. These th three concepts are very mixed together, so it is very difficult for me to distinguish them if in such a short time. You need to go back to YouTube, type in uh, the program name, and uh, and I mean listen to it and look at them again. Okay, of course the snake itself. You know the snake word is actually the first one is definitely a visual symbol, and then the end sign comes from this part. You know the snake is actually comes from this Leo Leo part you know of sound and uh, I show you some Aztec you know uh, carving as you can see the snake as here you can understand it as a rope also so the whole snake is uh, tied into a knot of a rope so I will show you a few Greek words about snake you don't even have to read it can you see that the Greek use this S this X this is also or this is O this is F this is also Fidi, the modern modern Greek. You see all this, they were actually drawing the snake out. So as time uh, went by, it actually become a reading. They were actually part of it, trying to show it visually. And of course, this is a big, you know, uh, what they call the Ouroboros. You know, this is the big old sign that uh, the, 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 the keep on the recycling of the same thing. But there is one thing you have to pay attention because snakes are very important 
important symbol in ancient time of fertility. Uh, from snake, it forms into the infinity, the egg, like an egg sign, uh, number eight. I mean, the, the turn 90 degrees, the infinity sign. And also, um, but then if I go back to the S, you know, that's why the suns is always related to the S. They use a snake form, and then the S, you know, is always uh, is a marker for Puro, and a marker for infinity, a marker for endlessness. This is all about the ancient belief in the snakes in uh, power of regeneration. So uh, this generation and regeneration become our hope for endless sons and descendants, okay? So uh, let me go down uh, back to the one of the picture I showed you last week. Again, this Sila, this street called Sila in, in, in the capital of Yemen. And then when it's filled with water, they call it the Sioux. And as you can see, this is actually a river snake through, you know, the uh, city itself. And that's why, you know, the snake and the water also, you know, are, become side by side. Visually, it is like a snake snake through. And that's why in even in Canton, this site is to watch through, you know, the whole region and seal is uh, a torrent and a torrent that uh, walks through this, the city normally after this seal after uh, the torrent rush through uh, anywhere uh, everything will be cleansed out. So this is exactly what the ancient experience religiously and, and, and physically, okay? So, um, so I hope you get through, uh, you understand how all this concept and sound and pictures are all intertwined together. Uh, now I'm going to show you three very important sound, I should say four very important sound regarding to the uh, multiplication and the uh, uh, and the assemble, okay? Uh, this same assemble, this part, and it's also the harm and also the jam and also the gum. And if you look at these words carefully, they all mean grouping things together. And um, again, uh, this is the H sound in many languages, H alphabet. Um, this is uh, the, actually the Chinese high. This is uh, ancient uh, each, uh, South uh, South Arab Arabian. This is uh, the S sound. Uh, you can understand it as sound and sound. And also uh, this is uh, uh, Hungarian, old Hungarian runic. This is carry the J sound, even though it's written like this, okay? And you can understand it as a charm and sound. This is actually a uh, Chinese. Look at how similar the Chinese is with the Hungarian. We all mean joining three into one, and then the sound is always sound or charm or jam, okay? So um, this is also a Chinese symbol, uh, meaning a group of birds, you know, uh, so it's jam. You can understand it's a J, so I simplify it as the jam, like the English jamming things together. So uh, pay attention to this harm, psalm, and jam. And that's why, you know, in the Bible, the three sons of Noah is, has always been this, this, the Psalm, Ham, and, and Jephthah. And, um, okay, because, you know, especially Jephthah, Jephthah is actually means to extend, to enlarge. Uh, all these names is the ancient obsession of us being, staying a strong um, tribe, okay, and a strong herd, okay. So the Chinese also have all this writing, but I have to go into detail later but you just have to look at them you know this means a whole same tribe is harm and then this uh, jamming three things together is a uh, psalm and uh, now I'm going to show you again if you need to see the bird uh, writing you need to go to the episode six I think relating to the bird all the song about the j, the j and the G sound and the G and the hard G and the soft G and the Ch sound. This is Chinese, okay? And Chinese again, J, okay? It's a bird. And this is Jawati in ancient Egyptian. And this is J in Saddam, uh, one of the ancient that become uh, Sanskrit. This is J in Sanskrit. This is English uh, G, of course. And then this is Joe in linear B. This is uh, Jim or Gim in um, Arabic. This is Persian Ch. This is Ch in Sanskrit. This is Ch in Tibetan. 
this is J in English, so you can see that all oh, these are related to bird. One of the very important thing is the aggregation of bird. Whenever birds are jamming together, so this is a very ancient undertone of drawing a bird that gives you the idea of uh, 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 grouping things together. Of course, you have the English word gamut, which is a hard G. And, and of course, you know, the J and G interchange become a jamming, jam together. And then uh, this week, I'm not going to touch this. This become the yoke when you yoke things together, tie things together. And between this G and the, and the Y, it actually went through the R, uh, E, become a J, become a Y. Okay, and then uh, that's why uh, the, this is the Yafa thing. But I will have to have another session to explain that clearly. But uh, I want you to pay attention to this. This Kamu, this is Kamos in Greek. It means uh, uh, getting married, two together. This is uh, Chinese, Kim. Kim actually also has the sense of uh, betrothal, uh, marrying two together. As you can see, we are also putting two things together. Uh, Jami, you see the bird sign right there, which is this one, is a, a place where they jam together, which is the mosque, okay? And then the mosque in Turkish becomes Chami. Um, look at this. This is almost like the transcription in Cantonese of this word. It's all about uh, jamming things together. So the ancient obsession about holding things, assemble things together and jamming things together is very clear. And up till now in all the languages you can always find this sam, ham, jam, gum, sang, all this four sang has to be there no matter what language there it is. So I want to show you back to the Bible, you know the tribal lineage. This is the ancient Hebrew two ways of showing the uh, heart H her and then the lighter H her okay and become the uh, this is the first woman Eve you know the in Hebrew is Hava sorry again I don't have time to finish this I will stop it right there uh, thank you very much yeah because I'm running out of time uh, I would really love to show you how the lineage shows every lineage has to be have an, a visual sign H to show the continuous of the line no matter in writing or in reality so the engine actually built it slowly uh, through thousands of years so it is very uh, difficult to explain this in just just 30 minutes but I am sure that it is not everything linear as you were taught so um, okay I will see you next week